I'm sure most of you have heard the phrase, there is nothing permanent except change. Yeah, I know, it's a bit cliche, but it's true for everything in the universe. We see change happen every day through our evolving society. It can be on a minute level, like the constantly changing billboards on the Sheikh Zayed Highway, or it can be on a larger scale, within groups of people between two consecutive periods of time, especially when individuals of both groups begin to have problems interacting and communicating with each other. While it is normal for us to have our own different values and ideals in life, it starts to become a problem when we can see uh, problems occurring within people of different generations. This is what we can call a generation gap. This gap is simply a difference in attitudes of people within different generations, which leads to a lack of understanding and eventually tense communication. The most common gap we see in our modern world today is between Generation X, those born from the 60s to the 80s, Millennials, born from the 80s to, and the 90s, and Generation Z, born in the 2000s. This is all because of our incredible rise in advancements in technology and the use of social media. A clear example that everyone is aware of is of the massive headlines and dozens of articles from various news sources about millennials destroying the world and ruining industries such as print newspapers and books due to digitalization and so on. However, these are more accurately simple generalizations about our generations. And even if this is the first time a lot of us are thinking about this today, the generation gap has actually been going on for years. If we look back to the 60s, not that long ago, we can clearly see the decade of revolutionary change, a time that reshaped the world's ideals on war, gender, civil rights, and religion. This was an incredible societal revolution, fueled almost exclusively by the younger generations. A clear model was even, don't trust anyone over 30, representing a, a rift between the generations. There are evident similarities between then and today. However, what is different today in our day and age than in the past is the wide range in age of people we see constantly interacting with one another. Because of the rapid medical and technological advances in society, we can clearly see up to three or four different generations working together as we have increased the retirement age with people living longer. These generations are confronted with their differences on a daily basis. And so the contrast between each generation has led to more friction and widened the gap even more. Elders with gray hair dressed in what others believe are old fashioned clothes appear to be invisible to the youth or continually disapproving. At the same time, younger generations frequently have a bad reputation around the world with many older generations believing the worst of them without actually coming into contact with them. It's interesting to think about why this is happening and there's actually a generation theory that discusses the impact of technology and new culture on the generation gap. This has resulted in the use of labels such as the Google generation and the net generation. So the theory defines digital natives as those who have grown up around technology, so they're really used to it. On the other hand, digital immigrants have been introduced to it later on in life and so have a little more trouble understanding it. Because of this, digital natives pro think and process information fundamentally differently than digital immigrants. So they're able to think about more than one thing at a time and process information quickly, like us high schoolers, compared to digital immigrants who process information a little more slowly working on one thing at a time, like our parents. And we have all experienced some sort of criticism or judgment due to the differences between our interactions with technology. So last year, I was in Egypt over the summer um, for Eid. And this is one of the very few times I get to see my family back home. So I was very excited. Um, I remember one day my parents dropped my brother and I off to be at our grandparents' house while they ran some errands. And so as soon as we walked in, my brother ran into the garden to play with our cousins and I was left alone to bond with the rest of the family. I quickly realized that there were a lot more people than I had expected and I wasn't even sure who some of them were, to be honest, but 
I was still really excited to see them. The first thing we did was have lunch, and I remember I was so happy to see my grandma and enjoy all of the homemade Egyptian food. So we sat down, and I tried to participate in the discussions, but it was just very hard to follow through. I was the only one there under the age of 40, and at a certain point, the conversation shifted to something deeper about society in Egypt, and I just couldn't relate, having not lived in Egypt in a long time. So I pulled out my phone. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to that, just simply pulling out your phone the second you feel you have nothing better to do. A few minutes later, I was scrolling through Instagram, and I hear my grandmother say, Oh look, Mariam's on her phone again, instead of trying to talk to us. To which my relative responded with, Just leave her alone, she probably doesn't understand what we're saying anyways. And they all proceeded to laugh. I didn't know what to do at this point. I had tried to participate in the conversation, but it was just very difficult to understand. And although I knew that it was a joke and not meant to be taken very seriously, I still felt uncomfortable and insecure in speaking around them again, in fear of being judged and criticized. Later on in the day, my dad came to me and told me how my grandmother had felt neglected. She told him that she felt that I didn't want to spend time with her because I'd chosen to go on my phone instead of participating in the discussion. She believed that I didn't enjoy being around her. So she felt the same way I did hearing that comment, hurt. And this is just clear evidence that there is a continuous cycle of miscommunication that leads to criticism and judgment between the generations, breaking up the cohesion within our society. People fear what they do not understand, and that's why you'll find all of these articles and the headlines about millennials destroying the agriculture industry and so on. It makes sense though, as change is intimidating on any level. It can be on a smaller scale, such as moving to a new campus, or on a societal level, but it's natural for them to feel this way. However, it is also important to understand that whether we like it or not, change is inevitable. The world around us is constantly changing, and for success in modern society, older generations must have an open mind and help support the younger generations through their transition to adulthood, helping them with their wisdom and past advice, for they are the ones who will be leading the world into the future. In turn, it is also vital to understand the role the younger generations must have in this, for it is also our responsibility to help ease the changes occurring in our society. We are not helping to end the stigma against us. We simply close ourselves off, which later makes older generations feel that we are an exclusive society of self-absorbed social media addicts who are simply unwilling to open up. Because of this, um, an example that we can see is using technology. So I know that for me, um, when I see when my mom comes to me asking for help with some document on her laptop, I'm very supportive at first. But what ends up happening is I become more and more irritated as she doesn't understand my explanation, thinking, why does she find this so hard? But I never think of the issue from her perspective. So now what? What can we do to fix this? How can we bridge the gap between the generations? Unfortunately, this will prove to be impossible. Even if we somehow figure out a way to bridge the current gap we see, there will be dozens and dozens of generations to come with widely different ideals and values than the former, continuously expanding the gap. So instead of trying and failing to solve this timeless issue, we can all do something about embracing one another's points of view. We do not necessarily have to agree with these ideals, but we must learn to respect and understand them. Every generation has positive aspects that are worth passing down and sharing, so we have to be able to value each other's opinions. And everyone can do something, no matter how small, to help with this. We can do this by learning to communicate in a more efficient manner to help ease the tension we see today. There are things we can do on both spectrums. We have to be open to new perspectives with a supportive attitude, as well as appreciate the wisdom and past experiences that we can fuse together to help build a successful society, one that blurs the, one that blurs the age-long divide between the generations. And 
Everyone here can do something, no matter how small, to help change the way we communicate, to embrace different generations. So, for the younger generations, we need to first start off by adapting the way we react to older generations. While we may disagree and bring up new points, it is still important to respect those who are older than us, for they are wiser and have a lot more knowledge about the world. Afterwards, we can choose to add on and express our own opinions in a constructive manner, bringing up new, perspe bringing up new perspectives with our modern knowledge. On the other spectrum, what is different for older generations and is more important is appreciating change. The era of technology cannot and simply should not be stopped. And for success in modern society, being prepared for change is key. While you may be tempted to continue following old traditions, it is also important to embrace new ideas from the newer generations. This will open up experiences that can benefit both sides. Overall, the most important step in communication for everyone in society is compromise. So the next time your mom comes to you for help with adding images to a Google Doc, some simple things that are of major importance are to be kind, patient, and supportive. It may not be second nature for others, so having these qualities will make everyone feel appreciated and supported, which will um, embrace the generation gap. Yes, this process will require patience, and yes, at times it will be infuriating and irritating, but it is absolutely crucial for our society today. Younger and older generations can help each other, learn from each other, and form valuable friendships. And so, in a world so divided, we currently need this as much as ever for our younger and older generations to be supported by one another, connected, and comforted together. Thank you.